Hello, my name is David Hamilton and this is a reading of my blog, Pass It On, The Surprising Signs of Contagious Happiness. Imagine you're having a regular day, feeling neither happy nor sad. Then you meet up with a friend who's buzzing with excitement about something great that's just happened to them. Without even trying, you start to feel a little lighter, a little happier. What if I told you this isn't just a coincidence, but a well-documented scientific phenomenon? And the further effects are quite astonishing. Scientists James Fowler and Nicholas Christakis studied data from thousands of people in a large social network and found something incredible. Happiness is contagious. For example, if someone you are friends with becomes happier for some reason, then there's a fairly decent chance that you will also become happier over the next few weeks or months. They even put some numbers on it. If it was an immediate social contact who became happier, the chances of you becoming happier were 15%. But this was an average of social contacts in general, people you know and interact with from time to time. If the person who became happier was someone you considered a friend, then the chances of you becoming happier was 25%. And if this friend was a close mutual friend and who lived within a mile of you, the chances of you becoming happier if they became happier increased to 63%. How is this even possible? Well, there's two main factors. One is emotional contagion and the other is behavioural contagion and they both fit under the umbrella of social contagion. Emotional contagion. Emotional contagion is a phenomena where we catch the emotions of people we spend time with just as you catch a cold from someone you interact with. It's facilitated by a network of brain cells known as the mirror neuron system, MNS. When someone you're with smiles, your MNS picks up their facial muscle movements and automatically triggers the same ones in you. That's what the mirror bit means. It's why you tend to smile when someone smiles, frown when someone frowns, even tense when you see someone looking fearful. But this is only half of it. At the same time, your MNS pings the emotional regions of your brain that are consistent with the smile. So, not, so you not only smile, but you also feel a bit better. In this way, if they're smiling because they feel happy about something, within seconds you find yourself smiling and feeling happier too. Behavioural contagion. With behavioural contagion, we become happier when someone's behaviour around us changes. So if your friend becomes happier and starts behaving differently, their happier behaviour has a knock-on effect on you. For example, maybe they want to go out more, share more coffees and conversations, go to the cinema. As you go along, these experiences result in you becoming happier too. It can also be caused by imitation. For example, say your happier friend tidies their garden and decorates their home because of how they're feeling. You may well get the urge to do the same yourself and reap the rewards of of satisfaction at the, at the extra cleanliness and colour in your life. Contagious happiness tends to work through both these pathways and it depends on the quality of relationship. It's much stronger if you're close friends, but less so if a friendship is one-sided. For example, if someone thinks of you as a friend, but you don't see them in the same way, then there's only a 12% chance of their happiness impacting you. The ripple effect. Where things get really interesting, is that happiness can spread much further than from just one person to another. Happiness actually spreads up to what's known as three degrees of separation. This means that if you become happier, you will increase the likelihood of your friends becoming happier, one degree, your friends' as friends, two degrees, and your friends' as friends' as friends, three degrees. And most likely, uh, you, ha you have never met nor will ever meet most of the people in the latter group yet your change in happiness affects them. That's amazing. To put some numbers to it, starting with the 15% average figure I mentioned above, which is the likelihood of your contacts in general at one degree of separation from you becoming happier, if you become happier, Fowlis and Christakis found that people at two degrees of separation from you stand a 10% chance of becoming happier because you have become happier. And that's a fascinating bit. Because you became happier. Not for some other seemingly random reason, but because you became happier. And, that's, and then it extends farther. People at three degrees of separation from you, remember these are your friends as friends as friends, have a 6% chance of becoming happier because you became happier. 
let's put this into perspective. Say you have 10 friends and each of them have 10 friends. So that's 100 people at two degrees of separation from you. And each of these people also have 10 friends. That's 1,000 people at three degrees of separation from you. So roughly 60 of these people will find themselves feeling a bit happier over the next few weeks or months because you have become happier, either, either through emotional or behavioural contagion. If you ever doubted how deeply connected we all are, just let those numbers sink in for a second. So the next time you do something that lifts your mood, a walk in nature, a heartfelt conversation, an act of kindness, remember that the benefits may extend far beyond yourself. Your happiness might just be the spark that ignites a wave of joy for people you'll never even meet. Now, I have some resources if you're interested in reading the the article, the, the, the research article, it's called Dynamic Spread of Happiness in a Large Social Network, Longitudinal, Longitudinal Analysis Over 20 Years in the Framingham Heart Study. That's a bit of a mouthful for, for you. It's by James Fowler and Nicholas Christakis. If you Google it, you'll, you'll find it. Uh, if you want to read more about contagious emotions and experiences like contagious happiness, contagious depression, contagious fear, loneliness, contagious changes in weight, contagious divorce, how it all works, how it happens in the workplace, how to stop it happening, even how playing violent video games or watching violent movies can affect us, I wrote a book on this subject that's called The Contagious Power of Thinking, which you can get on Amazon. So, so there you go. Uh, I am... Um, David Hamilton, Dr. David Hamilton, and this was a reading of my blog, Pass It On, The Surprising Science of Contagious Happiness.